A few days ago now, uh, one of my favorite fish passed away. Uh, he didn't live in this tank. I'm just showing this tank because, you know, it's more interesting. Uh, that fish was Gary the Grommy. He lived in this aquarium over here, which I haven't done an update video in forever, but you can see there are pencil fish in here now. And he lived alongside these guys uh, for a little while, but unfortunately he recently died about, I think it was two days ago now. Uh, here he is. I have him in this cup, unfortunately. I um, noticed that he was laying on the bottom. Um, why this happened, I believe to be the case of dwarf grommy disease, which is very common in dwarf grommies. And I initially had three of these guys because when I got him, I didn't know a lot about grommies and I honestly had always heard them as peaceful fish, uh, which they are, but not so much with each other. So there were three in the tank and Gary was, we'll call him the winner because uh, he ultimately killed one of the other grommies. The other, the first one to die though had dwarf grommy disease. Now the issue with dwarf grommy disease is it's not something like ick where it can be cured. It's not just something beginner aquarists, uh, beginner aquarists uh, find fault in. It is literally incurable. It's just a thing that dwarf grommy can get and it, it's a death sentence. You can't really do anything about it as far as I'm aware. Now, it obviously didn't kill him right away, but the way I see it, the I don't know how the disease works at all, but the way I see it, it was present in the water and eventually it managed to get the best of him. Uh, I had him since the summer and now it's February, so he lived for a little while, um, but it's unfortunate that he passed. He was a pretty funny fish. He would, he always looked really upset and grumpy and he was just kind of, I don't know, there was something entertaining about how upset he always looked. And it was fun to feed him because obviously the pencils are entertaining, but just having that one kind of silly centerpiece fish. And I'd always joke about how I like to keep terrible, like kind of garbage <laughs> fish. And by that, I mean like a generic pet smart thing. Like it's not exactly, you're not like, it's kind of like the thing you'd expect like a beginner aquarist to get. But I always like keeping stuff like that with more interesting fish. For example, in my Blackwater, which you guys haven't seen in a while, has Splash Tetras and Platinum Hatchets, which are rather cool. And it also has a PetSmart Beta. So that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of the thing we were going with here. Uh, I am sad about Gary's death, but um, unfortunately it's just sort of a thing that I'm not too upset because as far as I'm aware, it wasn't my bad husbandry. That's what would be more upsetting if it's like, oh, he died because, like, for example, in my nine gallon, the nitrates got absurdly high, like, I don't know how many months ago this was, and it literally killed a quarry. He got nitrate poisoning and died, and that was 100% my fault. But in this instance, as far as I can tell, it's not my fault. It had to, I mean, obviously it's my fault because I purchased multiple Garamis and all that stuff, but what I'm trying to say is that it's not because I wasn't keeping up with maintenance or anything like that, but I won't really know that until if I see other pencils dropping dead, I'll know. And then I'll feel even worse. But at this point in time, though I am sad, I'm not like blaming myself because I really couldn't do anything to prevent it. And some people that might make them more sad, like, Oh, it's sad because I literally could have done anything about it, but that doesn't make me sadder. It just makes me kind of like, Oh, it sucks, but I couldn't have done anything about it. So, like what what am I gonna do there's no sense in being upset about it too much now normally what I do with dead fish now most some people flush them I used to bury mine personally but recently I've been trying to provide for another set of animals I have and I put them in here this is my ice pod terrarium I call it the pit because anything that gets put in here will die not die but it'll get consumed within practically minutes with all these ice pods I don't know if you can see them in the back there there's a lot of moisture on here, but Gary, in my opinion, was, is too good for that. I don't think he deserves that. I think, you know what, he was a good fish. He provided me with some level of joy and entertainment. And I don't think he deserves to be ice pot food. Uh, so we're going to be burying him in my little goldfish plant here. As you can see it here. 
obviously you can't see the best. I'm going to turn a light on. I just wanted to keep it off so we could look at the fish tank. But, yep, Gary's going to be going in here. And um, I will be getting a honey grommy to replace them because as far as I'm aware, they cannot get dwarf grommy disease because they're not technically a dwarf grommy, even though they're small, but, like, it's a different classification or whatever. But that's okay with me. I just wanted to make this video to say, Gary the grommy, <laughs> you are a good fish. You provided me with entertainment. And you were you're stupid, but you were funny. One time he got stuck. Here, I'll show you right here. One time he got stuck right here, upside down. I thought he was dead, but no, it was just the leaf was so overgrown that he got trapped. And he would always get stuck like that, and I always thought it was funny. But this time he was at the bottom, and he was. I had touched him, thought maybe he's stuck on the crypt, but no, I touched him, and he barely moved. And when I scooped him up, he was like barely even moving. So I was like. Alright, I think he's screwed, and I did try to save him, but unfortunately not. And I've been putting off on burying him because I wanted to put it in a video, because sometimes I get ideas for videos and then I don't do them, so. Here is Gary. I don't really want to get a focus on a dead fish, but there you go. And uh, I'm going to be putting him in here. And the goal is to provide... What I like to do is when something dies, I like to sort of preserve it in a certain way. For example, I had a jumping spider that passed, one that I caught. I made a video on it, but I never released it because, well, it, it died and I was so sad about it. And then I caught another one and the same thing happened because I'm an idiot. And he's preserved in this terrarium over here. And that's the kind of thing I like to do with stuff that kind of matters more to me. I like to preserve them in some kind of way. Like I made a terrarium devoted to my dog, stuff like that. Now, Gary is kind of too... Most of my terrariums have a really thin substrate layer, so I think the outcome of adding... And plus moss doesn't really like high nutrient soil, so I think the overall outcome would actually be worse for the moss because it would end up just killing it because too much nutrients or something. I don't know, but any, any terrarium I've used, like um, fish water to moisturize <laughs> in, or for example... Um, not moisturized, but to water, has usually done a bit worse. So I think this is ultimately the best place for Gary. So um, he's in there. I don't, you can kind of see him. Gary is buried. And this plant's been having some, it looks like it's a bit nutrient deficient or something. I don't know. I watered enough, but I'm hoping that this will be sort of the thing that sprouts it to life, and that would make me happy. And then Gary can kind of live on through the plant. I know that's really cringy, but whatever. I don't feel bad about that. And there you go. This was my little tribute to Gary the Grammy. I know he's stupid pets aren't fish, but may he rest in peace, I hope. He provides this plant well, and um, I hope my next Garami does better than he did. I don't know what I'm going to name my next Garami, but it will probably be something similar. I don't know. Make a pun with hun Honey and Gary. Harry. That's just dumb. <laughs> Alright, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little thing. Uh, hopefully going to be making some better content or like just more content soon. Uh, I might actually bring back those old videos where I would just record the fish tank because with this camera I think I can do it a lot better now. But uh, yeah, this video is not an update, it's a video for Gary. So you can take a look at the swordtail tank. I'll give you a really quick look at, at Gary's tank. This is what it pretty much looked like the whole time he lived in it. You can see the pencils which are quite cool. Uh, you got the java ferns and the crypt and the amazon sword, some val in the back, some salvinia across the top, uh, pothos dripping down the bottom. Yeah, it was a cool tank. It's gonna suck for a while looking at it without him in it, because he was the first, this was my first tank, and he was like, after I moved all my tetras out of it, he was the first, like, new resident, so that's why it's kind of unfortunate, but at least it's not completely empty again. We have the pencils, <clears throat> so it's not too big a deal, but I will be getting another Grammy, and it'll be like <laughs> Gary 2.0 or something, but anyways, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, 
more content coming soon. This was just a little video I felt like I should make because Gary was a funny fish. All right, well, thanks for watching. I'm sorry for the long outro. I'll see you guys in the next one, whenever that may be, whatever it may be.